Welcome back to Good Morning La Land. We're so honored on Wednesdays. We talk a lot about women's empowerment. And this woman, uh, I spent last week with her and a group of women with Nick Pigeon up in a beautiful house in the hills of Hollywood. And we talked all things business and community and women and empowerment and ageism. So important. So Linda Davies Carr, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. You are a business coach, a thought leader. I mean, you have like these, these qualifications that are like 30 years running businesses, all this executive MBA, master belt, it master and the NLP. hashtag master fixer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, hashtag take master right? fixer. I'll take that, I'll take that. Well, I'm so excited just to get to know you and your personal story and how you were able to accomplish everything that you've done. I am I'm a hard worker, you know. I've worked a long time and I worked hard. I was brought up with a good work ethic. Um, I came into employment in the 80s. You were told you could have it all. You could do everything, yeah. I bought my first house at 19 and I just got on with it. Wow. I just got on with it. So I didn't go to university straight from school. Um, I was too hungry just to get out and w make money. Um, so I just got on with it. I love, I love that. that. I mean, I just got on with it. it. Yeah. Get Aaron, let's just get on with it. Honestly, yeah. right? <laughs> There was just no choice for you. There was no option to fail. Was there ever fear of that? Uh, I think everybody fears failure, don't they, in one dimension or another. But no, I was determined that I just wanted to get out in the world and I wanted to make my mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I did. I was brought up uh, with a good work ethic, as I said. Yeah. Um, and I think in growing up in the UK in the 80s, as your first job, you were encouraged to go out and do it all, buy your first house, you have the holidays, be a mum, do everything you want to do. Um, I had my children at 30 and 33. I was a single mum for nine years. I did it all on my own, and I think it just makes you more resilient. My oh. God, you really got right. on with it. So I did. <laughs> so, so let's talk about it, because you, um, you know, we had some conversations last week as women and what this movement, really the uh, movement's going on. So let's talk a little bit about ageism because we talked about that a little bit, which is such an important conversation. We did. Because you have another platform called Non-Millennial Revolution. Revolution. So tell us about that. Um, I'm 53. I'm proud to be 53. And um, I want to, I work with a lot of women who are getting into their 40s and 50s and you know, they brought up their children and they're looking around, they're going, it's my, it's my time, but what's there for me? Or they've had a brilliant, brilliant idea, but they've never had the courage or the conviction or the time or the energy or the confidence to make it happen for them. Or, or they've got a business and they've reached a plateau and they just don't know where to take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I coach a lot of businesses. Um, I'm a business coach, yeah, Master mm -hmm. Fix is my business brand. And they're looking for something else. They're looking for some guidance, they're looking for some motivation, they're looking for some confidence, and they want to make it better for themselves. They reach that plateau. But what would you say to the woman who thinks, well, geez, I'm, I'm 40 or 50, I'm, I'm too old. I've already run, run my life, done my time to set myself up for retirement. I would say you've got 40 or 50 years ahead of you. Mm. Yeah, so let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But mm -hmm. let's talk about why nominalists, because I think it has a lot to do with social media. And what are women that are over 40 generally dealing with? Because social media is such a huge part of today's world, and yet it's like focused on these young 20-year-old asses. Let's just face the fact, like it's like too much. It's over the top. It's interesting, I worked with somebody um, who I, I checked out, I, I stalked on social media and I thought she's too young, she's too beautiful, she's too everything for me to work with. What on earth could I learn from her? But in, interesting right back at me, it's like p people look at me and going, oh my goodness, you've had a career, you know, you've had 30 years in business, you've brought up your children, share with me your life lessons, share with me your wisdom, help me understand how I can grow my performance, how I can grow my business, how I can grow my ideas. Yeah. So the non-millennial revolution was kind of evolved as a platform and it's the fastest growing global platform for the 40 plus women. Um, and it's, uh, it's to help us because, you know, we're on social media, but we're stalking. Maybe some of us aren't very active, but we're stalking. So this platform is there to say, find your voice, let's help you, let's empower you, because you have 40 or 50 years ahead of you. And what would you say to the woman who's never felt that she had her voice in the 40 or 50 years that she's never found it herself? Um, I'm not a mindset coach. Yeah, but um, and I'm not a psychologist, as, as some of you are. But I would say, do you know what? There's something there for everyone. So the non-millennial revolution has been put together for that person to help them find their voice, whether or not they need a, a, a tug or a shove, or whether or not they need some gentle cajoling along the way. There's something there for everyone. Mm. How did you discover your voice? Um, I've always been gobby. <laughs> <laughs> My father would say, "I'll be gobby" is an English phrase for just opinionated and and loud. Yeah. So. Um, 
did I ever found my voice? I never lost my voice. It was always there. But I think when I got into my 40s and 50s, it's I wanted to do something for myself more. I built the Master Fixer from scratch at age 51. Yeah. So and it's, um, I've grown it to a six-figure business really, really quickly in, what, 18 months. And I wanted to be the trailblazer to show my girls. I've got two girls. To show my, trail, my children that they could have it all. Mm-hmm. What an incredible example. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So uh, you work with Nick Pigeon, who, big shout out to yeah. Nick, we love Nick. Nick, tell, tell us a little bit about why, why, as a woman who you know business, you obviously can get on with it, why you would have a coach and why you feel someone would want a coach. Okay, well, I've always had a coach. Uh-huh. So I've been in business for 30 years and I worked for some brilliant organizations, but I was always encouraged to level up. So I've always, always had a coach. I had a couple of coaches for a while. Um, some people to help me with mindset and confidence and some people to help me with business. To help you level up, to grow your thinking, to challenge your thinking, to get you to do more, to have more and to do mm. more. So important. I think that it's a myth that you're going to get somewhere and you don't need any more mentoring. I think we're all mentors or coaches and we're all students. Like there's always, and yeah. I will forever be growing in both areas. And I think that that's kind of the beauty of of that uh, synergy that happens. So when you work with a woman, um, what does that look like? Um, I always kick off with a three-hour strategy session because I, my job is to, my job is to get under the guts of the business or get a, get under the guts of the problem. And I think you know you can't do it in a quick hour. So I spend two to three hours with someone trying to get under the guts of their business, um, opening the hood as you would say, and getting underneath. So finding out what motivates them, what they need, what they're looking for personally, um, spiritually sometimes, but also what they're looking for for their family as well. That's really really important. What are their financial goals? People don't like talking about money, do they? You know. Mm-hmm. But you've got to ha- You've got to ask the money questions. So um, I'm a very, very straight talker. Um, I cut to the quick quite quickly. Um, and I want to get great results for the clients that are working with me. Mm. Such an exciting time. It huh? is. It really is. What do you think you've learned about yourself in working with these clients? Um, I talk too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I swear too much. <laughs> yeah. I'm not here this morning, I promise. Um, <laughs> but I talk too fast. And what have I learned? That um, I have over the 30 years built all this wonderful wisdom and I don't appreciate that I have all this knowledge and this wisdom and um, it's not until you start working with people who need support and help that you realize how much experience that you really really do have. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a profound principle that often in the giving you receive a reminder of sort of what it is that you have in deep abundance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm. So true. Thank you for mm-hmm. being with us and sharing your time and Much light. Pleasure. Tell everyone where they can find and work with you and be a part of the Non Millennial Revolution. The Non Millennial Revolution is new, so it's um, we're on Insta as Non Millennial Millennial Revolution, and we have a new website which is setting, being set up as a blog. So we're looking for bloggers, women over forty, who want to guest blog on our platform. So that's also the Non Millennial Revolution mm. Thank you. Love Thank it. You. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Good morning, La La Land.